welcome then to uh, Vendée Globe. Uh, we're slightly windy here today. We have uh, Storm Bella arriving on the Atlantic West Coast. We have uh, 40 knots just now and more through the day. So we are uh, therefore making a little bit of a pre-record uh, of this uh, programme. Say we've got the st Storm Bella rattling a roof just now. Uh, we have the Southern Ocean storm here on the west coast of the Atlantic. We have the weather which the sailors in the South Pacific might normally be getting. Uh, and so say a little bit of a background noise and so apologies if, we, uh, if you hear that. In the meantime, out on the race course today, well, uh, Yannick Bestav and Charlie Dallin are out in front uh, by over 270 miles. Alan Rura had that problem yesterday with his keel ram. He has uh, repaired that and is going quite well today. And Benjamin Dutroux had a problem yesterday with his uh, J2, with his head sail, uh, and he took him a little bit to the north and he has made some kind of repair. He's going to be a little bit slowed over the coming days. Uh, but talking of uh, Benjamin Dutroux and the Omia Water family, uh, we are a special guest on the plateau today is Thomas Cardran, who is with the uh, Omia Water family team. He's a Figaro sailor in his own right. Uh, he was a past top rookie on Le Solitaire. He was co-skipper with uh, Benjamin on the last Transact Jacques Vabra. He's also an America's Cup winning foil builder. He built, helped build the foils and all the little technical winning uh, apparatus that uh, helped Team New Zealand in 2017 in Bermuda and he's a member of the Team uh, Vondi group uh, and uh, we're very fortunate to have him. He lives here in Le Sabre de Lone and he's on the, on the stage with us just now. So uh, Thomas, uh, last night and yesterday was a little bit tricky for your team with uh, Ben's problems with his uh, head sail. What was happening? Yeah, he had, we, we had to deal with the problem on the sail so he had to drop the sail down. Uh, it was a bit tricky because it was uh, in a three meter swell and 20 knots. So yeah, he had to, to manage to put the sail in the, in the boat. And now we still have to climb in the mast and take the, the head of the sail down and fix it and put it back in and go back in the race. So the sail is furled just now, is it? Or? No, the sail was unfurled and uh, so he had to, to drop it down. So that was a tough job. Tough job. And how, how did he take that? This is his first really big problem, isn't it? Uh, no, we have we had a couple of uh, other big problems, but uh, we did to fix it. We haven't talked too much about that because this is uh, changing the, the mind, you know, of the, uh, the others. Yeah. You know, uh, if they know that he has a problem, they will uh, know it, so they will push harder to, to beat him. So we won't talk all the time about the problems. It's like wild animals out there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But uh, how is he? He's in good form after this, or is he taking this? How's he taking the, the problem? Uh, Benjamin is the is a monster. He's always uh, moving forward. So like now he's uh, keeping keeping focus to fix it, and now he's back in the race. He's on on the right uh, heading. So in the next few days he will r repair it and be hundred percent. I'm sure. Tell us a little bit about your team. You're a very, very small team, a very s relatively small budget. Yeah, we got a small budget. Uh, we came late in the Vendée Globe. Uh, nine months uh, before the Transat Jack Vab. So we bring the boat back to ja from Japan and then... So just to be clear, the boat was originally Alex Thompson's Hugo Boss. Yeah, that was Hugo Boss boat in 2012, which finished uh, third. And then uh, Koji or bought the boat and finished the Vendée Globe in Cape Town. Cape Town. Uh, it dismasted and then we had to bring the boat back from Japan, step a new mast and uh, do the qualify, do the Transat Jack Vab and then the Vendée Globe. And that was all fairly, fairly tight uh, schedule, wasn't it? You had some problems with the mast, yeah, the building of the mast. Yeah, we had problems with the delivery of the mast, so we had to work on the mast with the team. Uh, which was our specialty composite, so it was not a problem, but the problem was more the schedules. But uh, they always say that adversity makes you stronger, and that seems to be the case with your team. Yeah, we are a strong team. We are always keeping focus forward, moving forward, and Benjamin is always really motivated, so that's, that's good. So how many are on the team? Uh, we are three, four people permanent, and then uh, we are dealing with contractors for hydraulics, engine, uh, electronics, sales. But uh, yeah, we, we are four. We are uh, Alice, which is a manager and communication and uh, 
partner relationship and doing a lot of things. Uh, me, technical manager, uh, course keeper on the Transat. We've got uh, Sebastian, which is a laminator. Charles, media man, uh, engineer, uh, doing the winch <laughs> stuff. And so we are all uh, multi-purpose. All multi-talented. Yeah, exactly. So and t tell us a little bit about the, the, the kind of following in the, in the Vendée region. Uh, f yeah, we, are, we got a lot of people following us. We got a lot of friends here because Benjamin is coming from Lille Dieu, which is a tiny island. Uh, he grew up there. He started sailing in Lille Dieu, in, and then he started uh, racing offshore with Tim Vendée, with the Figaro. And he grew up here, and so we got a lot of people following us. And uh, your exact role, then, you're the technical manager. What do you do? Uh, I try to give my best to have a, a reliable boat, uh, trying to keep the boat always uh, in good shape, because we had we we had no more no much money, so we have to 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 do the good choice on what we're going to buy, what we're going to keep, what we're going to throw up. So my, my job is keep the boat working well and keeping the team on the, on the track. And you have a mocha experience from before, or is this your first mocha project? Yeah, uh, this is my first Imoka project. Uh, and actually, before the transat with Benjamin, we sailed only six days on Imoka. So that was uh, the really beginning of our Imoka experience. Good, thank you so much, uh, Thomas. We'll come back to you in just one second. Well, the skipper that we have contacted uh, earlier today is, uh, is none other than Boris Herman on board uh, Sea Explorer Yacht Club de Monaco. In the middle of the night, once again, for, uh, for our skippers out in front, they're moving to the east. We should start to see them uh, getting into the daylight in our, uh, in our vacations. But this is Boris today. Hi, Andy. Thanks for having me again. I am very good. I'm actually keeping warm in my bunk because it's quite cold out here. It's quite cold here, Boris. We have about 40 knots outside here in Les Sables de Lone. I think we have the weather that you should have. I'm very happy that we don't have 40 knots. I have uh, 12, 13, 14 knots at the moment. And uh, I'm, it's nevertheless quite uncomfortable. It's very bouncy because I have a wave from this little low pressure. Uh, right at me. I'm heading right into these waves and it's very bouncy. Voluntarily sailing a little bit slower than it could. So in fact, Boris, you were saying this this period has been quite good to recover and to get lots of energy for the next stage. Boris, did you hear me? I was saying you, you said that this period uh, in the quieter, lighter winds is, uh, is good to recover for the next stage to Cape Horn and up the Atlantic. Yes, it's true. I really enjoyed uh, the couple of days, the flat seas, and um, it feels like almost a, a week or so since uh, I had splashes of water on deck, which is not quite true, but time perception is very uh, distorted on board, of course. And uh, yeah, it was just good for over Christmas. I could enjoy the Christmas day itself and so on. And now we are back up to work, it feels like. Um, beating up wind, horrible slamming, and uh, yeah, back to work. Back to work. So what is the kind of meteo, the weather program over the next couple of days? You're getting into this, uh, this low pressure system now. Exactly, the little low finally uh, takes us away from the high, and um, we are heading near the center, We're going near the center, and um, and then the, the low and the we have a, like a fortunate timing almost with this low, and the low uh, the low moves east while we while we arrive to the center, and then we can uh, hook into some south westerly breeze. And, uh, and go in kind of a more normal manner uh, towards Cape Horn. And uh, then everything changes. We have another low a bit later, so 
two two big low pressure systems that we deal with over the next week. And uh, yeah, it's about a week that it's, it's my routing takes me to Cape Horn. Um, Boris, you've been saying that you've been uh, getting a little bit fed up with your your, your uh, meal plans, your diet, and you've tried to make some changes. Um, that's true. That's true. I um, I know we do all this to uh, to fulfil our dream, to, to to do the biggest challenge in our sailing that we can set ourselves. And I'm sure after the finish, uh, any complaining about food or bouncing and slamming will be forgotten quickly. Uh, but it is true that I mean, I I really dream of sitting at a table quietly with a plate and a spoon and a fork. Um, well, that is really uh, what we have out here, uh, but we, I'm also conscious of the positive. We don't have any corona. We almost forget about it out here. So um, that's, that's definitely on the positive side. And uh, I understand you're a little bit of, along with Jean Le Cam, you're a bit of a fan of coffee. Absolutely, yes. Um, I'm also a fan of Jean Le Cam, by the way. Uh, I remember uh, back in 2010, I... Uh, I visited, yes, <laughs> in 2010, I visited his house. Uh, he took me upstairs for a coffee in his living room, plenty of books there, so he seems to be a bit an intellectual guy. Uh, I don't know, but it uh, seems like. And, um, and he had many, many coffee machines, small ones, like a collection. And um, he was trying to choose the right one to take on board, and he gave me one of his collections. And, uh, yeah, I kept the for a long time, I even took it on the Barcelona World Race those days. So, do you do you have any special coffee with you just now on uh, Sea Explorer Yacht Club de Monaco, or are you keeping uh, keeping the weight right down? Well, I'm, the setup of my interior doesn't really have a kitchen. I just have a little sliding board at my entry underneath the tunnel with a um, jet boy. So, I think I have the poorest kitchen setup of all mockers. Uh, I don't have um, a pressure cooker or anything, not a coffee machine, of course. Um, so it's, it's a bit a matter of practicability and finding the space to put, put these things. Um, but I'm, I really have very limited kitchen equipment. That's the reason why I'm a bit tired of my uh, food plan. Um, so I, I, yeah, I, I only have some instant drive, that's it. Um, so, Boris, what, what are you thinking about next time? What would you change for next time? I'm sure that you have a little list somewhere of uh, things you'd like to change with the boat and your, uh, your approach for the next Vendée Globe. Yes, absolutely. There is, um, I would put more emphasis on the kitchen situation uh, and have a pressure cooker to be able to cook pasta. Normally, a pasta with pesto and things like that, it just gives a different texture and a, a, a variability to your food plan. I would probably install some little bubbles so I could look outside from inside more easily and, uh, and more cameras to look at the sails. I, I had one camera to look at the head sails, but the lens got, um, got bad. I tried to polish the lens yesterday, but it's not possible. The, the salt and the sun has eaten up the surface, so uh, I have no visibility at my sails through cameras, which, which is a really big help to trim sails at night and keep, uh, keep good speed. Well, Boris, it's good to know this is not a one-off, and hopefully we'll see you once again in 2024. But uh, great to talk with you. Have a, have a quiet night, and uh, we'll speak in a few days, Boris. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao, bye-bye. So Boris Herman then on a typically good form uh, on board uh, Sea Explorer Yacht Club de Monaco. He's only a couple of miles uh, from uh, Jean Le Cam and the two sailing in close company and enjoying each other's company. Now then the weather today, well, uh, we have a special guest in the form of uh, Christian Dumar, our uh, weather supplier who we speak with every day and he's doing a little Sunday special for us. The fleet should stay quite uh, compact. We should not see uh, well, when they'll get to Cape Horn, the distance between the first and the tenth should remain quite uh, quite small. Behind, if we look what 
at what's happening behind. So we have Alan Rura, who is leading the second group. Uh, there is a big uh, low pressure system here moving east with uh, Jeremy Bayou, uh, so on Charal, and uh, just uh, ahead of this uh, of the system. So the front will, the wind is probably going to shift this morning for Jeremy uh, to southwest behind the front. Thomas. Thomas. And ahead of this front, we, we have Piper and uh, Arnaud Boissière. And so the wind will get uh, stronger today, probably 35 knots, maybe gusts up to 45 or 50 knots for, for them. Kojiro Shirashi, just behind the, the low pressure here, uh, with the southwesterly winds, probably around 30 knots. And then back in the fleet, we have uh, Sébastien Destremo, Alexia Barrier here. So they're sailing around the high pressure system in the Indian Ocean. And so the weather conditions are much nicer for them boats which are back in the in the fleet so that's about it for today for the weather listen christian uh, thomas has a question for you yes hi christian uh what's gonna happen with the north option of uh, benjamin in the next uh, hours or days do you think this is gonna be good for him yeah so the uh, i think benjamin did quite a good uh, choice he should have um, well, the boats in the south are going to be upwind for the coming hours, and you should have um, a northerly, uh, no, southerly wind, sorry. And so it, it could be uh, sailing with a better angle, probably, uh, than the boats in the south. So it, it, could be a good, uh, it could be a good option, you know. So, and Christian, who's, I mean, you, you watch the race every day. Who's really impressed you uh, in the recent, uh, recent weeks? Uh, I would say all the boats have impressed me because they, they're all sailing very well. Uh, the leading group, so the full, well, the first half of the fleet is very is sailing within uh, 1,000 miles up to uh, Armel Tripon, so it's it's very close. Uh, four years ago, the distance between the first boat and the tenth boat was 5,600 miles at, uh, on the 27th of uh, December. And today it's less than 1,000 miles. So all the boats are sitting very well uh, in this group. And obviously, Christian, you do a lot of preparation with, the, uh, with some teams and some sailors beforehand. Does this particular scenario, is that something that you had ever prepared for in the uh, South Pacific round uh, Point Nemo, or is this very atypical? No, having a high pressure system for such a long time close to the exclusion zone is, uh, is not usual in this uh, area. It could happen for one, one day and then the high pressure moves away. But having a high pressure for almost a week on this zone is uh, very atypical, yeah. So, and the other thing, Christian, is basically you're telling us that we're going to be extremely busy towards the end of January. And uh, end of January, yeah, the... Going to yeah, so all the fleet could arrive uh, maybe within a few a few days in the Sable, uh, probably between the 27th and the 31st of January. Yeah, so it could be a, a nice period to be in the Sable to watch all the boats coming in. And we're going to be working very hard. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be busy, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Anyway, thank you so much, uh, Christian. We'll speak. Uh, we'll speak again. I'm quite sure. So, Christian Dumard, our uh, resident weather expert giving us the, uh, his expert view today. Toma, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the project that uh, Benjamin's involved with the Omia, or the water family in particular. Uh, yeah, with the water family, we've got an uh, uh, environment pro project. So we are uh, doing, um, we are going in the school with, to, to, to learn to, to kids how to, to protect the ocean, how to, to protect the water which is not uh, uh, an open source on the planet, you know. We have only a, a little bit of uh, uh, drinkable water on the planet, so we are giving them some little uh, so is that, tips. Is that just locally in the Vendée area or everywhere? No, that's all around the France, because Water Family got some, uh, some point uh, all around, so uh, they are working hard, actually. Every day they are in the in the class classes to 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 talk to the kids. And um, what this gives us kind of a little bit of an insight into the Vendée Globe in the Vendée region. Presumably, there's many many young kids now want to do the Vendée Globe. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, I started uh, sailing Optimist in Les Sables uh, with, uh, not Benjamin, but uh, Sebastian, yeah. sails with my brother. So yeah, when we were kids in Vendée we are, and sailing, we are all dreaming about Vendée Globe, but uh, this is a tough job to, to, be, to be here. So what's the secret to getting to the Vendée Globe then, from your region, shall we say? Uh, I think you have to be really motivated because uh, that's that's a exceptional race. So um, yeah, you. I think for Benjamin, for example, that's a dream from from the beginning. For me, I I, I really don't want to do the Vendée Globe. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Especially not just now. No. But, but um, moving on a little bit to the the technical side of things. And obviously, we've seen some foil problems. You're uh, a composite expert. What would you like to see change or develop with the foils in particular? Uh, that's, that's hard to talk about that because there are many, many uh, things coming in. And uh, you don't know if the boat is too powerful, or you don't know if uh, this is a composite problem, or if they're just pushing too hard. Or, But I, I think the the... The good system would be to be able to, to, to take the foil out of the water when they want to slow down. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the best way to have big foils, pushing hard when the wind is uh, pretty medium, and take them off when the wind is too, too high. Because I think when there is 30 knots, if the boat is sailing more at more than 50 knots, it can surf at 30 knots in two Without seconds the and foils. crash in the front waves. Yeah. So that's a bit dangerous. So you have a, you have a secret solution, do you, that you've already developed? Uh, yeah, but I, <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Good, thank you so much, uh, Thomas. So um, the girls, the, the girls um, Miranda Merrin and uh, Pip Hare have been going really well been going really well in recent days. Um, Pip here in particular, we spoke with her on Christmas Day. And Miranda Merrin has just crossed uh, um, Cape Lewin. And these were, this is uh, Miranda's report from Cape Lewin. Um, and she was just uh, crossing on uh, just after Christmas Day. Aujourd'hui, 26 décembre 2020, le bateau Compagne de France et moi avons doublé uh, la longitude de Cape Lewin qui est une marque de parcours euh, du vent des globes. Il faut le dire qu'on a laissé un peu de marge, plus de 600 000 quand même. Et euh, donc, euh, prochaine, oh, prochaine marque de parcours, bah, il, faut, il y a encore des caps à passer, mais prochaine marque de parcours officielle, c'est le Cap Horn. Mais ça, c'est encore très loin. Euh, donc, des conditions... Euh, entre 23 et 43 nœuds. Il euh, y a des moments où ça va pas mal vite et d'autres où ça va un peu moins vite. Et euh, voici où se trouve euh, Cap Lewin. C'est au sud-ouest de l'Australie ici. Et nous sommes un peu plus au sud ici où il y a mon doigt. Et, euh, C'est très sympa de savoir qu'il y a un énorme continent de terre euh, vraiment pas loin. Et euh, merci à Jerry pour, euh, pour ce cadeau de Noël euh, très pratique. Maintenant, je vais savoir où je suis. Oh. Il y a pas mal de vent et euh, ça bouge pas mal. Il est 7h... 35 heures TU. Là. Il y a 30, 31, 32 nœuds. Ça va Ouh, assez vite. Et nous, on est là, sous l'Australie. Bon. Et il faut se tenir. So Miranda Merrin's uh, backup system there, the plastic globe, just to make sure she knows exactly where she is on uh, Campaign de France. Uh, Miranda going well. Let's look at the uh, standings uh, today. This is a, a little bit of a pre-record as we have a technical problem uh, because of the uh, the weather. So these are the standings this morning. But it's uh, Yannick Bestevin leading by uh, 40, 45 miles roughly from Charlie Dallin. 
uh, both going roughly the same speed, about 10 or 11 knots. Uh, Thomas Ryong has caught back up. He's up to third place, uh, albeit uh, about uh, 290 miles behind uh, behind Dallin, uh, Jean Le Cam and Boris Herman still close together, only about four miles apart. Uh, Jean Le Cam leading uh, Boris, but still uh, very close together. Damien Sagan not far behind in fifth. Isabel Josh in uh, Damien Sagan in sixth. Isabel Josh in seventh. And Maxime Sorel into the pack, as we said yesterday, in eighth. Uh, all these boats going around about the same speed between fourth and eighth, all doing just under 12 knots. Giancarlo Podotti is just slightly slower. Benjamin Dutroux is, uh, as I say, back on course after his head sail problem. He's doing 11 or 12 knots uh, this morning. He's in 10th. And Louis Burton has caught up uh, many miles, and he's just at the back of that group uh, Group now. Alan Rura in 15th. Well, uh, Alan, he, um, he had his uh, problem with his uh, keel ram yesterday, but he's back in business uh, on board La Fabrique and doing uh, 16 knots just now. Uh, Pip here. 18 knots uh, over the course of the morning. She's uh, been going well, but she's uh, pushing hard to stay ahead of this uh, weather system that Christian uh, spoke about. Uh, Didac Costa is now uh, over 100 miles behind uh, Pip. Kojiro Shiraishi uh, catching the uh, Didac uh, all the time. He's uh, going just a little bit quicker. And in terms of day's run, did uh, about 20, 25 miles more than, uh, than our Spanish uh, competitor. And then otherwise, Miranda Merin in 23rd, uh, and uh, Ari Husella in 26th, uh, sailing his own race and enjoying uh, every moment on board Starke Mocha Vondi Globe 2020. So that's the standings just now. I'm just going to finish with one question for, uh, for Thomas. Um, so what, what do you think Benjamin's prospects are into the, uh, the rest of the race? Uh, I think he will try to finish first, because uh, that's still long. There is a long way to go, but uh, I would like... I, I hope he will be in the top 10. And that would be a big result for you? Yeah, it would be a big result for the team and the, the sponsors and everyone. Yeah, that that's, would be really, really good for us. Good. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Hopefully, maybe you come back again before the end of the race? Maybe, yeah, if you, if you need to. <laughs> Always. I mean, the great thing is you live here, which is uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. So that's uh, all we have time. We're going to finish with uh, Pip here, a little video from her just keeping us up to date. But uh, do join us again uh, for our Vondi Globe uh, Live. Uh, if you have any questions, do put them on our uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, or indeed on Instagram. And let's finish with, uh, with Pip. It's a bit too wet to do on deck at the moment. But I didn't realise. I thought <laughs> it's just the most stunning day again. So I'm doing some conservatory yachting. I'm here in my salubrious conservatory and uh, just sitting, feeling the boat, watching the waves. It's really warm in here. Yay! <laughs> it's really warm in here. I've got some daft punk going. It's a daft punk day.